Hello everybody, so this video was requested in the comment section, so here I go. This is the seven, um, what I'm going to call the interesting e-commerce stocks right now. And you may have noticed that I've put the Chinese stocks in there. And so, of course, the caveat is, do you invest in Chinese stock? That's something you have to decide for yourself. And so you may want to skip if I cover for Chinese companies. But let me just get started. And so the first stock that I'm going to uh, talk about is C Limited. So C Limited just reported their earnings. They were up in pre-market and they are roughly flat right now which is too bad because the stock appears to be doing very well and they've guided some promising number on e-commerce. And I actually just checked on C Limited. And if you look at the quarter over quarter uh, direction of their gaming division, you can see that it's, it's, it's barely down a quarter over quarter. It's down less than 5%. And so if, you, if you've been following the stock, that was one of my main issues was their gaming division dying. Well, it looks like their gaming division is not dying, dying anymore. It's being flat. It's flattening. And as a result of that, it's not hurting revenue growth. And so this is a company that we should see revenue growth go back towards the 30% mark for that company as gaming stops leaking, stops bleeding. And so that's a very reassuring thing. I really liked the quarter from everything I saw. It's kind of a blessing that the stock is not up right now because I'm looking to buy more. C is actually a, um, you know, not a meaningful, but close to a meaningful position for me. It's a little more than a 1% position for me. Um, and I like the stock. I think it's a, I think it's a very undervalued company right now at these levels. Um, and they have a clear positioning in Indonesia with Shopee. They are the number one player in Shopee with Shopee in Indonesia. And their main competitor is uh, being driven out of the Indonesian market, which is TikTok shop is being driven out of Indonesia by the Indonesian regulator. So there's a lot to love about uh, about C Limited, and their money division is also growing very nicely quarter over quarter. So so in the future, this company may be a large player, a large leader in e-commerce, in digital banking, in the Southeast Asia region. That's why the name of the company is C Limited, by the way. C stands for Southeast Asia. They may become a leader, and the gaming division will do what it does. I don't really care too much about the gaming division. Um, the point to um, to to this uh, spreadsheet, of course, is to look at the valuation. When you look at the valuation of C Limited uh, for an e-commerce stock, it is somewhat cheap at um, you know almost first tier cheapest at a zero point three six. Keeping in mind that this EV over GP over revenue growth, that's how I value stocks. It's how cheap am I paying for each percentage point of forward growth? How cheap is that? Um, and of course, this company is penalized because it only has fourteen percent forward growth. Um, if you double that, you would have that and that would be a very cheap stock. And I believe C Limited will be easily uh, be able to achieve 28% in growth. Um, noteworthy, I don't have a rule, a rule of 40 for C Limited because they are planning on being EBITDA profitable in the second half of this year. So I just didn't put it in here because it's not very meaningful. Um, I don't have it for that stock. Okay, so let me move on to Another company, some some people call this company the, the, the most undervalued company, uh, perhaps in the history of, of e-commerce, and this company is definitely undervalued. Um, the problem with Alibaba, of course, is the growth, the lack, the lack of revenue growth at 4%. They are not growing very fast, and because of that in my spreadsheet, they are penalized. They're actually the second most expensive stock in my spreadsheet because that growth is not there. Remember, if a business is growing at 4%, you're not keeping up with inflation. You're not keeping up with economic growth in that country. I want a business to at least grow, you know, inflation plus economic growth. I want I want both of those numbers added up and I want, I want the business to grow at least more than that for it to stay afloat. When I look at a business that grows at only 4% predicted over the next 12 months, I look at a business that is not growing, that is drowning. And so a lot of people invest in Alibaba because they think the valuation will reset. They think that, you know, Chinese stocks will go through a reset of their valuation. They're very highly undervalued right now. And they think that they will reset to higher multiples. And they say, oh, well, if the multiple triples, then this stock is a triple, right? You could make the same argument for a lot of the Chinese stocks that I've listed on there, like Pinjojo or JD. Um, 
And, you know, that's a bet that you're making. I personally believe that investing in the trajectory of revenue, investing in a growing flow of revenues is, is the way I do it, at least. And I think it's, it's it works better because you never know when a stock resets. But if the revenue growth is growing at 50% a year, like clockwork, you know that if, you're, if your stock has not grown, your stock has gotten 50% cheaper because the stock is now 50% bigger. Which is why I think my viewers may understand why I actually like Pinjojo, and I might actually do a a uh, a deep dive on Pinjojo because for Pinjojo the uh, the revenue growth is excellent at forty six percent next twelve months, and it's true that their app. Uh, is is getting very popular in the United States, Temu, but Temu is popular in, in in other countries, and this is a company that's doing very well in China too. But again, I'm I'm you know I'm a lover of revenue growth, and when I see a stock growing at 46, percent I have to ask myself, well, how much of the business is Pinduoduo stealing from Alibaba and from JD? And the answer to that is probably quite a bit. So sure enough, Pinduoduo is the most compelling stock out of all of the stocks that I cover in this spreadsheet. It is the cheapest stock at a 0.17, and their their EBITDA margin, their rule of 40, is a 70%, you know, 24% plus 46% revenue growth. That leads us to a 70% rule of 40, so that's excellent, you know, but of course, the question is, do you invest in Chinese companies? And a lot of people say, I will never invest in Chinese companies because I don't trust uh, the system, I don't trust the legal system over there, and I don't trust uh, the impact of government on my stocks over there, and to which I, I would reply, and this is a thought that I'm you know, building on right now, is after what has happened to Elon Musk in the state of Delaware by a judge and a, an elected official, right? And, and, and same, I could, I could argue the same thing when, 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 what you look in, in the overreaching of some of the regulation against Bitcoin miners in the US, for example, uh, you know, with a $10,000 fine if you don't report your Bitcoin miner very, very precisely, and they designed the document so that they made sure that the miners would actually make mistakes in order to be able to levy 10,000 a day in fines. I, I tell myself, it's, it's, it, I mean, how different is it? You know, I don't, I don't really know how different is it, but, but if, if a stock gets cheap enough, you know, I understand why one may be tempted to invest in China. Also, chi China, China is about to go through a lot of stimulus right now a lot of their real estate is struggling and because of that the government may be putting more stimulus in china so you know like i said i think i think this is a this uh, I, you know i don't i don't discriminate based on the country uh, i i i wouldn't have a problem owning Pinj pinjojo and i have to do a full analysis on this one jd so jd is a typical example of a stock i wouldn't touch you know two percent revenue growth for jd that's not good at all and i do not understand if, if there is some some reporting mistakes or if my numbers are wrong but the enterprise value of jd is a 21 billion and they have 147 billion in sales so either either uh, the website i use for my numbers is wrong or this is the cheapest company on a revenue basis that I've literally ever seen because you had a 0 0.15. And I'm going to lean towards there's been, a, there's been a problem in the translation of the numbers. That's what I'm going to say here. Uh, but nonetheless, think about that. Despite that EV over sales being very, very cheap, you can see the gross margin is, is uh, has reached the charity level. It's actually a lower gross margin than even a charity would have at a 9% gross margin. So absolutely not interested. And I think there's some shenanigans going on here too. So um, take take my numbers with a grain of salt on JD. Uh, I, I Wherever, if there's something going on with the numbers. So, so just take those with a grain of salt. Anyways, I wouldn't be interested because of revenue growth and that number is correct. That's too low for revenue growth. Is the more expensive stock in my spreadsheet. But you know, I would I would put that one to the side, and and maybe if you find another YouTuber who's more knowledgeable about JD, you can learn from them about it. Now, a stock I have much more confidence on. This is my biggest e-commerce play, Mercado Libre. Mercado Libre is a meaningful position for me. It's about yeah close to 5% of a portfolio. So it's a meaningful position for me. I really believe in Mercado Libre. Um, I like Latin America. I like investing in Latin America. I think I think I understand that market fairly well. You know, I I, I, I think the culture is, is, you know, similar in many ways to Southern United States culture and to European culture. Um, 
lots of things I understand about Latin America, and, and I'm confident in this market. And I love the revenue growth. So the revenue growth coming from Mercado Libre is 27%. So love that very much for a company of this size, right? 83 billion going this much is, is, is great. The gross margin is outstanding at 58%. Uh, the stock right now has gotten a little cheaper, and a 0.36 is actually pretty cheap for that stock. It's gotten cheaper because they've recognized a few uh, tax loss this quarter, and of course, the market only thinks about the current quarter uh, and they're upset that uh, Mercado Libre had to pay more taxes this quarter but they had provisioned for it and so I don't understand why the market is upset about it but in the meantime we get the stock a little cheaper this is a stock whose EBITDA margin is trending up at a 19% it's going up and more up and so we get a 46% so comfortably or above the rule of 40 still growing at 27% and the EV over GP over revenue growth is a 0.36 so that's almost uh, almost top tier cheapest, almost first tier cheapest, not quite, but almost. So um, very compelled by this company. Now, another stock that I don't own is is Coupang. Now, Coupang is cheap compared to the growth that is, that is predicted, uh, 16%. The gross margin is okay, I suppose, at 25%, although it could be higher. The EBITDA margin, they are clearly ramping that margin. Uh, they are not quite there yet. That margin will be higher going forward. So rule of 40, they're not quite very, if you added up, they had a 19%. Gross margin, I'm not too compelled by the gross margin on this one. Uh, and the revenue growth 60% is, is, um, is just okay. It is just okay. Because if I look at C-Limited, you know, the reason why C-Limited's forward revenue growth is, is 14% is remember this business is weighted by 30% of the business, which is the gaming division, which is not growing. But if you look at the e-commerce and the the, the the money division of, of, of C-Limited, it's growing very fast, right? So so that number is still weighed down by gaming. For Coupang, that's the number of a full e-commerce division and the full... Uh, um, you know, delivery division for them. So so it's still very low in my view, and, and that's why I'm staying out of the stock. And then I will finish with a special mention, a special mention for Amazon. Amazon is not that expensive for a Magnificent 7 stock, if you really think about it. It's not that expensive. It's actually twice as cheap as Tesla, which is a, a Magnificent 7 stock, which is my second biggest position. I have to get used to saying that Tesla is my second biggest position because Bitcoin is now smoking Tesla in my position, and it's not even funny. It's like it's like Bitcoin is now becoming bigger than Tesla by a long margin. So thank you, Bitcoin. Although you may have noticed I don't cover it too much on the channel anymore, but I'm happy about the price of Bitcoin. But anyways, Tesla is cheap. I find Tesla, uh, not Tesla, Amazon is cheap. I find Amazon pretty cheap at a 0 0.59, knowing that this company is, is as de-risk as it gets, in my view. I mean, it's the leader in Europe. It's the leader in Latin America. And we are still growing at 12 percent, which in absolute is not that good. But if you compare it to the rate of growth of the US economy, you're still growing at like four times the rate of the economy. The gross margin is excellent at 47 percent. They are the leading cloud uh, company. I mean, the, the revenue that they have at 574 billion, it's, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous uh, how much revenue you're, you're, you're at more than 5 percent of a GDP of the U.S. flowing through Amazon. Now, of course, that's an international company, but even if you extrapolate that to the U.S., that's still a major, major, major share. How big is this business going to be in the next 10 years? I mean, that's outstanding. EBITDA margin is nice at 15%. So, so for, a, for, a, for, for such a consensus stock, I would argue that the valuation is, is fairly inexpensive for Amazon. 27% on the rule of 40, 15% EBITDA margin. And the company still has fairly nice revenue growth at 12%. So I, I like I like Amazon too, even though in this spreadsheet, I own Mercado Libre, I own C Limited, and I have a teeny, teeny, tiny position in Alibaba. It's not even worth mentioning. But my, my number one stock that I own in there is Mercado Libre. I'm the most bullish on. And then C Limited would be almost a close, a close suck on after this quarter. And I'll be listening to the call today, and I may do a video on the C earnings if that interests the viewers of the channel. So anyways, thank you so so much for watching. This was no financial advice, not investment advice, just entertainment. Please like, please subscribe and have a wonderful day.